Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms today, coming at y'all with another manufacturer review, this time of Aero Precision. And Aero Precision's been around since the mid 1990s, producing all sorts of AR related product and different types of aerospace stuff, hence Aero Precision, I guess. But anyway, recently they have definitely evolved into more of the firearms, AR 15s, building rifles, and even pistols. And what you see right here in front of you guys is actually my build uh, that is a complete arrow build of uh, the M5, which is pretty much an AR 10. All right, and you all, I've been showing this in a couple of videos recently, and a lot of you guys have been asking about what all went into this build. So I'm just going to start really quick and just cover this so I can answer all those questions in one video and customer service can thank me for this later. Right up front, Yankee Hill silencer with their two chamber brake and I got to get the <sighs> suppressor off. There it goes. Once it's on there, it's definitely not going anywhere. I think I like Surefire's mounting system a little bit better because it makes it a little bit easier. But that's okay. Three chamber brake, I'm sorry, right up front. This is sitting on a ballistic advantage, 18 inch fluted barrel, straight fluted barrel. This is their, um, one of their higher performance barrels. And I actually don't think they're even making these anymore. So good luck trying to find one of those, I guess. It is, again, 18 inch with the rifle length, gas system on it, stainless steel, all that type of fun stuff. It is a nice barrel. I like it a lot. And I've also, I do have an adjustable gas block on it simply because, well, shooting a suppressed AR sometimes can be a little, you know, gas to the face, okay? Now, one thing I do like about Aero Precision is they offer a whole different line of rails, right? And the one that I have right here is actually their Atlas S1 rail, I think is what it is. And it's their slim rail, so you don't have to pick a tinny that runs the full length. And I really like this for this setup because this will allow me to put a larger optic up here with a larger objective lens so that way when it dips down, it's not interfering with any pick a tinny. Sweet, I like that quite a bit because I am running this EOTech Voodoo three and a half to 18 power. Um, I'm working on a different project right now and I want something that is very, very precise that offers me a lot of magnification. And uh, yeah, so you guys might see what I'm talking about in the next coming months, but that's okay. Anyway, uh, I really like their rails. They also offer the enhanced rails like what we have on their M4E1 here. That is a thick boy when it comes to a rail. Don't know how much I'm liking it personally, because like I said, it is a really thick rail. I mean, just look at the diameter going around this guy here. And as you can tell, you know, I can even barely, I, yeah, I can't even wrap my hand all the way around it. That's okay. But one thing that's nice about these larger rails, like what you have on the enhanced rail by Aero Precision, is it's keeping the rail away from the barrel. So therefore you don't have as much heat close to the rail. So if you wanted to have different accessories on it, things like that, or if you're not shooting with gloves and you're sending a lot of rounds down range, you're not just gonna have a lot of heat right up close. It's still very well ventilated, right? So it's gonna keep the barrel nice and cool. It's still free floated, which is great. Um, so maybe some rail covers just to help protect any type of bare hands would be good, but just throwing it out there. But we'll talk more about the M4 E1 here in just a moment. Back to the M5, uh, since it is m lock capable, I do just have a Magpul vertical grip here. I kind of use this for a while. I did have my Trigicon RMR offset, so I would use that kind of just going here to, to engage closer to targets or something along those lines and just do a quick little 45 degree switch. That's always fun. Harris bipod with the m lock mount, nice. Coming back a little bit further, this is the M5. This is a matched upper and lower receiver set. When I built this, and just me personally, I typically like to have my upper and lower matched uh, just because I don't have to worry about there being fitment issues between one manufacturer over another or something like that. Again, that's just me, my own little OCD thing. I'm, if you're buying quality parts, you're really not gonna have to worry about it anyway. So there you go, all right? And here too, I do have Geisley's Super Semi-Auto Enhanced Trigger. It's a two-stage trigger. Uh, and it is, I think, overall anywhere between like 2.8 to 3.9 pounds of overall uh, weight. But in the first stage, you've got about two pounds. And then in the last stage, I think it's like anywhere between like 
one or something. <laughs> so it's super lightweight, that much I can tell you, all right? But uh, Geisley makes fantastic triggers and that's what you're looking for, check them out. Uh, ballistic Advantage, by the way, thinking about the barrel, uh, for a while I'm pretty sure that they're still associated together, them and Aero Precision. I know that Ballistic Advantage was making some barrels for Aero and uh, they are just great quality, all right? And that's how I ultimately feel about Aero Precision as well. Great quality for a fantastic price, all right? It's, I always kind of like fall into the mindset of, <laughs> you get what you pay for, buy once, cry once. Uh, but if you are looking for something that is budget friendly, for the most part, but also high quality, has great quality control, great, great customer service, Aero Precision for me, works out very well, all right? Just got the regular controls on this guy here. I don't have anything ambi other than the charging handle, which is the Radian Raptor. Um, <laughs> I'm actually looking to try out Aero Precision's new charging handle, the Breach, once uh, Tam Fam Graham gets those topography ones on his website. So Tam, I'm just waiting. I'm totally willing to spend the money on getting me a nice topography charging handle, so. Waiting on that, all right? Sharps Brothers for the matching wood accent and the grip. That right there is all just for looks, obviously, even though the grip does feel really good. It's nice and slim, okay? And then your standard rifle uh, by Magpul rifle stock with the rifle buffer tube, okay? Aero Precision, like I said, just all around the great stuff. And I like what they've been doing in the market because for a while there, Anybody making AR-15s was widely welcome because, well, we couldn't find anything. So it was nice that uh, they started making complete ARs, AR accessories, and they're changing it up a little bit with like this complete M4E1 that you see right here. No forward assist, just throwing that out there. And you guys can just go ahead and let me know down in the comments section, is it necessary anyway? Some would argue yes, some would argue no. Me, it's aesthetics. I like it being there because I, I, that's just what I like, all right? I like it being there, even though originally it wasn't designed, but you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, also to their charging handle on this guy, this right here isn't the breech, which is a little bit more low profile in a sense, doesn't have the ears sticking out as much, uh, but this is their ambi charging handle. And it's a pretty wide boy. It sticks out there quite a bit. But if you're looking for a lot of surface area to grab and really rip, and maybe ambi controls, there you go, check it out. Me personally, I like something a little bit more slim, uh, simply because I don't want these getting caught up on gear and things like that, all right? So there you go. Now back to the rail on this guy, again, Nice and large, thick. It does actually feel very comfortable to get a grip on. I haven't tried throwing any type of angled foregrip or vertical grip on this to see how I, I like that. So that'll be coming soon. But they do offer QD mounts for your sling. Right side, left side, and on the bottom, which is pretty nice. Only in this uh, section right back here though. Also too, lower receiver on the M4E1 is pretty sweet. Uh, they do have the enlarged trigger guard integrated here, just like what you see on most billets. And is, again, it just looks good. It looks clean. Their machining process is always very well done. I like the graphic for the safety. If you did want to go ambi, you can see it there. It's not just a simple little bullet and you know, with an X to it or anything else like that. It does have little cutouts. Overall, just looks really good. And like I said, this is the M4E1. Of course, they make all sorts of different little clones out there. Like the, uh, for a while, I think they made like an M16 and M4 clone, which is pretty sweet. I'm always into that stuff. But recently, and we just showed in a video not too long ago, they came out with the EPC-9, which I think is probably one of the best, personally, one of the best AR9s on the market if that's what you're going for as far as cost goes, ergonomics, quality, things like that. It just feels really good. I think also too that the magazine release when it comes to this lower receiver is probably one of the best in the market. It's very positive, very easy to actuate. I don't feel like I'm going to accidentally hit it by any means because it still has these little ears here that protect the actual release itself. So if you feel like you might bump it up against gear or something like that, I don't know. You, you might for maybe a left-handed left shooter, maybe, but for me being right-handed, that's not getting in the way at all. 
which I like quite a bit, all right? And this one right here is their Atlas R1 rail. So if you wanted to compare the R1 rail to their enhanced rail, you can see how much more slim this rail is. You do have the Picatinny that still runs the full length of the rail if that's what you want. Uh, they also make different generations of the rail that include, again, the QD, which you see on here. So there should be a Gen 2 then, I think is what that means, with the uh, QD mounts and of course it's still M-Lock which is pretty much everybody's little favorite slim mounting or attachment option all right looking back on the lower receiver very similar to the M4 we see that we do have that enlarged and skeletonized trigger guard very cool everything else I like about this as well includes the flared magwell very sweet gun. Now, having shot a couple of mags through this guy now, I gotta tell you, it shoots like an AR-9, right? I mean, it's a nine millimeter AR. It works direct blowback. What, what else can I say? It's gonna have a little bit of recoil to it, which every gun does, so it's not bad at all. What I do like about the R1 rail, though, it allows me to get a good grip on this guy so I can really grab that, force the muzzle wherever I want it to go as far as maybe changing targets, mit mitigating recoil, managing recoil. I can do that, all of that easily. Controls are all very simple and positive. I have seen some manufacturers out there that have less than great controls. Doing something as simple as that right there is difficult for some manufacturers, but on this guy it feels really good. Charging handle, everything about that feels great. Everything feels like it locks up really good. And I'm just happy to see Error Precision bringing in yet another little nine millimeter AR option out there because I like them, right? So there you go, check them out. And yeah, of course, we've got the uh, Aimpoint T2 on there. I think that really fits it aesthetically and looks good, all right? This one here specifically came with the SBA3 brace. If you wanted to have no brace, different types of braces, Aero offers all sorts of different options. Of course, you can find all of the Aero Precision products on our website, classicfirearms.com. All of this that you are seeing if that's what you are into right now. Again, finding something like the little nine millimeter here that takes Glock mags, yes, it takes Glock mags, is all is pretty fun. Maybe drop a binary in it, see how that runs too. Yeah, maybe one day, we'll see. But ultimately, with my experience with Aero Precision, having built that 308 of mine and spent quite a bit of time with the manufacturer, I haven't done a warehouse tour or anything or a manufacturer's tour like we did with Daniel Defense, but I will tell you this, I believe in their products. I think that they make great stuff and I don't know, I think I kind of want to build out maybe like a whole M16A4 clone by Aero just to have something nice and affordable that looks very familiar as to what I'm issued. I think that would be pretty sweet, all right? But I'll leave it off there. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about Aero Precision. Like I said, me personally, yeah, I, I love this brand for the price, the quality. Hard to beat, all right? But uh, all that being said, I'll see you guys down in the comment section all about Aero Precision. One other manufacturer I wanna talk about is IWI. Why? Because they're the reason we have our current giveaway, the CR56 Amex. I mean, dang it, got that confused with the Galil Ace Gen 2 762x39 sweetness that we are currently offering as our giveaway. But yeah, we're making this like another Call of Duty loadout because you guys seem to like our Call of Duty videos and all of those little fun puns and jokes and everything else that we make about it. So why not some body armor and stuff like that? So yeah, all of that included in this giveaway. Make sure you head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries. Utilize the code word AMAX to get a couple hundred extra entries. I think you guys got it. It's just A max, A M A X. Yeah, that should work. Maybe try CR56, see if that works for you too. I don't know. But anyway, I'll leave it off there, guys. Again, let me know all of your experiences with Aero Precision down in the comments below. Do you recommend them for maybe first time buyers, maybe experienced buyers, maybe somebody wanting to do a first time build like I did myself uh, with the AR308 down there? Let us know and I'll leave it off there. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.